I actually never didn't, I, I never actually started. I mean, it's, it was always something that I did. It, I never had a, a real beginning. It was something that was existing in my life since ever. So I don't really know. Um, there was never a beginning. And which is, um, I mean, I just, let's say, one of the important moments I asked my parents to buy me this kind of keyboards. So maybe this is a beginning, but uh, it's something that I always did and, and I was always really into. Um, so I hope it will never also have an end, you know, it's a, it's a continuous uh, thing. Naturally, when I started conducting opera, I was something like 21. Okay, and I was then resident conductor in the Israeli opera. So I think that in the first seven years, I did I don't know 40 different operas or 35, because I could not just cho I could not choose. I just did everything we had in the house. I was always the assistant of the principal conductor, and uh, I always did. Let's say I used to do maybe two three shows in the end of each production. So this way, I gathered a lot of uh, experience and also a lot of a lot of music. Then, after I went to Barenboim and I started doing things on my own, um, I'm trying to choose now, let's say, these days, I'm choosing based on the places where I go. I mean, for example, now in Venice, uh, we are here for two months for some kind of a bel canto festival, because this is Venice and I know the orchestra very well and this is something that I think can have some kind of an added value to do this kind of repertoire with, uh, with, uh, to do this kind of repertoire with this orchestra. Or another example, I go to, I'm in Dresden also, I have some kind of a residency, I mean I work a lot in, in Dresden and I'm doing there mostly Mozart and Strauss, which is Dresden, let's say, might be the best place to do this kind of music. So I think this is a luxury that I might have, but I think this is an interesting way to choose things because then you can really you can really communicate with the people and you can really do things on the highest level possible. Um, and I would say highest level possible, but enjoying what they give you because they have this material in their hands. Actually, now I'm doing Elisir d'Amore, which, which might be my favorite opera. I mean, it is really something so special and very, very magic. But on the other hand, I just did Carmen in Munich, which was amazing. I did Daphne Strauss in Dresden. So it depends. What I'm doing is my favorite normally. My relationship with La Fenice started five years ago. Uh, it was Fortunato Otombina, which is the artistic director of the theater. He practically followed me. I mean, he came, I did a very, very uh, important for me production in Italy, which was my first thing I did um, alone, let's say. It was in 2008. And um, this was an Aida we did in Padova, which is a very small place, beautiful place in Italy. And this Aida got a lot of, a lot of, a lot of attention because it was really something that came out really special. And Otombina, like others, he came to see this Aida. And since then we became really very close. He came to see me in a lot of other opportunities. And then I think in 2010 or nine, um, he brought me here. Uh, first, it was some kind of a symphonic concert. I think the first three years were symphonic concerts. Then I did uh, a whole summer with Carmen and Elisir d'Amore. Then I did Butterfly and then, you know, the whole, uh, the whole relationship grew. But um, it's, this is from their side, but also from my side, I must say that uh, I worked in Italy all over. I mean, I don't think there is a theater where I, I did not conduct in Italy. Maybe in Rome, Rome probably is the only one. Um, and I must say from all these theaters, might be the most special relationship I, I have is with this theater. I just have energy. I mean, uh, I have energy and, and also this kind of, uh, I mean, this is my, probably in, in, in some way, my way to, to, I don't know, to wake up to the people, to motivate um, the people. There are a few, co few conductors who, who are still big influence. Uh, some of them are dead, some of them alive, and which is even more interesting because um, the people who are alive, let's say probably Barenboim would be the, the most important one because I was very, very close to him um, as an assistant. And this is something that is really priceless. Before him, I was not yet a musician. After I came to him, I really started to define what is this profession, what, what this profession is all about. And this has a lot of aspects, I mean, of, of reading the score, of conducting, of thinking, of, of motivating people, like you said, of a lot of things. 
Let's choose another one, let's say, um, that can be obviously interesting, which is already dead something like 20 years and is still a big influence, not only on me, I think on the world, which is Leonard Bernstein, which um, not even only as a, comp as a composer or conductor or pianist, but also as a personality, as, uh, I mean, it's, it's really, it is, it is almost, it's unbelievable, I mean, actually, because even, even if you see the, the comments on YouTube or you see his videos, I mean, people, people still get very excited by him, which is amazing. I mean, uh, so, so many years after. Um, so let's say, if I have to choose like this two, one of each uh, world, I would choose these two.